Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's Thursday at nine o'clock, which means it's time for a magic stuff. Now today, I'm gonna to be talking to you about closing routines, whether it be a stand-up show, whether it be a kid's show, whether it be a close-up show, whether it be a mix and mingle performance, whether it be just an impromptu gathering and you're just doing some magic. What are the most important things to think about when you are trying to plan your closer? And, and to be clear, the closer of your act is really important. Like I say, whether you're performing professionally on stage in front of a thousand people, or whether you're just performing for friends down the pub, how you close your routine is so vitally important. A good closer will have people remember that performance for a very, very long time. But we've all seen those magicians that just perform trick after trick after trick after trick after trick, and it just ends up getting to a point where it's just like, oh my gosh, this is going on forever. And the strongest trick was done absolutely ages ago, and, and they've ended up on something absolutely terrible. I've seen people do that, especially in a kind of an impromptu environment. You wanna make sure that your closing routine is incredibly strong, because then people remember you. If you're a professional magician, you want people people to remember you because you want them to book you. How do you get people to remember you and book you? By making sure they remember your performance. How do you make them remember your performance? By making sure that the closer is incredibly strong. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about the best tricks that you can actually do in a close-up performance. I talked about my favorite closing routines if you're performing close-up. But a few weeks before that, I talked about my favorite routines uh, to perform in a stand-up performance. So if you haven't seen either of those videos, Videos, you can go and check them out and you can go and have a look at what I personally think in my act and my best closing routines. Um, but I want to talk to you today about what to consider when putting a closing routine together. What's important to consider when you're doing your closer? Because you know, I don't know what tricks you do. I don't know what type of magic you do. You might be a mentalist. You might just do magic. You might be doing something very niche and you only do magic with sponge balls. You might just be a Rubik's Cube magician. You might have a character. But whatever it is that you do, understanding the importance of a closer is absolutely vital. So the, the videos that I've done before that's just my opinion. That's out of my act, what I think makes the best closer. But it might be that you don't perform any of those routines. It might be that you don't want to perform any of those routines. So like I say, in this video, we're going to talk about what is important to consider when you look through your repertoire and you're trying to figure out what your closing routine should be. What are the things to consider? That's what this video is all about. But please, one thing, do not, and I've seen so many magicians do this, please don't be that person that goes out and performs. They have kind of no idea of um, what they're going to do. They have no idea of what they're going to perform. They're not really 100% sure and, and they, they don't have a plan. And so they just end up stringing a whole bunch of stuff together. And because they want to make a good impression, they put the stronger stuff at the start and then they end up with some sort of damp squid finale. That's not what you want. You want to seriously think about this stuff beforehand. So think about what makes. Look at your whole act. Look at the video that I did on set lists, right? And, and I talk about this when I did the video on set lists about how to create a set list. Have a look at all of your repertoire, write it down and highlight which tricks you think out of your repertoire would make the best closing routine in which environment, because you can have more than one closer. You can absolutely have more than one closer, especially if you're doing restaurant magic or close-up magic. You know, you might be doing a different closer at each table, but understanding why that closer is important is vital. So we're gonna talk about some points that I think might be worth knowing when you're putting your closer together. Let's get into it. Okay, so the first point to consider is that your closing routine must have a sense of finality. It must be obvious to the audience that that's your closing trick. And I can't help you with this because obviously I don't know what tricks are in your repertoire and I don't know what tricks aren't in your repertoire. But if you have a trick in your repertoire, it means that you've gone out and performed it. And you'll know as well as me that there's certain tricks that you do that are guaranteed to get a really good reaction. It might just be because it's really strong. It might be that you've scripted it really tightly. It might be that you've done it a million times and you know it inside out and book to front. But there's certain routines that guarantee to get a really strong reaction from the audience. You want to make sure that's the routine that you do to close your set. Um, or that should be one of your closers. Again, if we're talking about close-up magic here, that should be one of your closers. You want something that's going to really kind of give a sense of 
finality. That's the best way I can describe it. You don't want to be doing like, um, uh, you know, like knockout routine after knockout routine after knockout routine. And then you do a little thing with a business card that's kind of OK, but it doesn't stand up to the magic or the content that your previous routines did. I'll give you an example with an illusion act, right? So in my illusion act, when I do a 45 minute illusion act, I probably have maybe three, four, five illusions, depending on the size of the stage, depending on um, the size of the audience, depending on a lot of different factors. I'll have certain amount of illusions in the show. And then the rest of the time, I'll do front of cloth pieces, or I'll do uh, cabaret pieces that are designed to play bigger. Um, the suit jacket escape is a perfect example. Although the suit jacket escape is not an illusion, because of the fact that I've got two spectators up on stage, I've got a big curtain, it, and I'm talking about escapology, it plays to a bigger audience, if that kind of makes sense. Um, however, in my illusion show, I absolutely have to close on an illusion. I could not close on something like the suit jacket escape. I'm billed as an illusion act, even if I think that there's a moment of magic in my act that's stronger than an illusion, I'm an illusion act. Part of the reason people book an illusion act is they want the spectacle of big boxes and things like that. So I have to make sure that if I'm opening on an illusion and I've got illusions peppered throughout the show, I have to close on an illusion. I can't do it any other way. I have to close on something big, something grand, something that um, stands up to the other illusions that I've done during the course of the show. So th that's something that you need to consider. Look at the magic that you've done up until the point of the closing routine and make sure that the trick that you do is at least as good as, if not better than, the routines that you've done before it. And I mean in every single way, magical content, um, whatever it may be, the, the, the reaction from the audience, everything must make sure, everything in that routine you need to make sure that it's absolutely the best trick in your act. You need to make sure that that routine that you put as your closer has a real sense of finality. The second point to consider, and this isn't something that you have to do every time, but it's worth thinking about, is having a closing routine that delivers on an opening promise. So let me give you an example. Um, let me give you an example. Uh, I'll give you an example close up and I'll give you a couple of examples on stage. Uh, so an example on stage is let's say you're doing a master prediction box. So you've got a box that's hanging from the stage um, and it's there and it's, it's been there the whole time. You might come out on stage and say, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Craig. I'm the magician here this evening and uh, I, uh, I'm going to do some magic for you. Now, everyone see that box over there? That is the grand finale. Do we get an ooh? That's going to be the moment right there that punctuates the whole show. You guys are going to be blown away. When you see what's in that box, you're not going to believe it. Now you do your act and whatever that act might be. And then at the end... You, um, you go, now do you remember the box? And you bring the box back into play. So at the beginning, you, you reference the box. You said it was going to be amazing. And then at the end, you deliver on that promise. An example of doing this in a close-up environment is uh, I posted something on my Instagram feed a little while ago of me doing a triumph routine with the Timeline app. So I did, uh, if you don't know what Timeline is, it, makes the audience, it gives the audience the impression that you've taken them back in time. Um, and I'll, I'll post, I'll, I'll actually let you see the video of this. I'll put the, the video of this just in case you didn't see it on my Instagram feed. Um, but uh, the point I'm trying to make here is I posted a video of me doing Triumph. And uh, so I did a Triumph type sequence. I actually used the, the shuffling sequence from my routine, Rockish Triumph. And I just used the timeline app to give the impression that I took the deck back in time to when um, the card was face up in the face down deck. You'll see, I'll put a video up. The point is, at the beginning of that routine, you didn't see the beginning. When you watch the video, I'd done 10 minutes before this. When I walked up to the group, I said, guys, just so you know, at the end of this routine, I'm going to, I'm going to actually show you how to go backwards in time. Who's excited? You guys excited? I'm going to teach you how to go backwards in time. This is very cool. Anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. Let's do some magic. And I went through my normal act and then I went into this and I said, right, time travel. Let me show you what I was talking about. So I, I referenced what I was going to do. And then at the end, I delivered on that promise, if that makes sense. So I'll let you see that video in a second. Now, it was filmed by a spectator. Um, it wasn't filmed by me. So it's vertical video. I'm sorry about that. It's also very jumpy. Uh, but it'll give you an idea of the routine that I did. But that's an example of delivering on a promise that you made at the beginning of the show. Uh, or the beginning of the act in this case, because this is a walk around performance. Uh, one more example is if you've seen me do my mystery box routine. 
uh, which is using John Allen's Destination Box on stage. And if you haven't, go check out the performance. I posted it on the uh, video that I, when I talked about the best stand-up tricks for your show, I actually did a full performance. I included a full performance of, of that routine. But when I open up a show and I know I'm going to use Destination Box to close... I'll open up the show and I'll say, ladies and gentlemen, I have here the box of mystery. I'd like someone to hold on to this for me. I will get back to it a little bit later on, but can someone hold on to it? Thank you very much. I will get back to that at the end of the show. You right there, so I'd like you to hold on to that for me and keep it nice and safe. Can you do that? Thank you very much. So I give the box out at the very beginning and then the whole thing at the end, I call back to the box at the very, very end. And I've normally forgotten about the box at that point. And when I call back to the box, they're thinking, no way, because they know I bought it out to the audience at the very beginning. So... There's three examples, but the point is you're, you should make sure that your closing routine uh, delivers on a promise that you made at the beginning of the act. You don't always have to do that, but I find that's a nice gambit to do that keeps people invested in the performance all the way throughout. Let's have a quick look at the uh, video that I told you about of me doing this uh, during a wedding. So let's have a look at that video. Okay, number three, the next thing to talk about is having a closing routine bring the whole act full circle. Um, and this is very, very similar to what I talked about in point two, where I talked about delivering on a promise. This is kind of a very similar thing, um, but slightly different. And I'll give you an example in my stand-up show of something that I do. Um, I might open up my stand-up show by borrowing a phone and I, I do something with the phone. Typically, I'll do toxic or something like that. So I'll do something with the phone that I borrowed and then I'll vanish the phone. Now, sometimes I'll switch it for a dummy phone and I'll use uh, some method of destroying the phone. A lot of the time I'll tell them I'm going to float it over a bucket of water and it'll drop into the water or whatever method I use. Stick it in a bag and smash it, whatever. I make their phone disappear. I then uh, they go and sit down. And um, that's the end of that. And at the end of the routine, at the end of the show, at the very, very end, I have the phone come back. And a lot of the time I'll have it appear inside a melon. So the phone will appear inside a melon that's been in full view the whole time. There's been a box on, the t uh, on stage the whole time. And at the very end, I kind of go, well, that's the show. Thank you very much. Oh, hang on. I'm forgetting something. Your phone. Can you come back on stage? This box has been here the whole time. The cut open the lemon, the melon, and inside is their phone. So that's an example of opening the thing and then bringing it full circle at the end. Now, if you're going to apply that to a close-up performance, you could, for example, borrow someone's ring and vanish it, just do a flight or, um, you know, like some sort of ring flight type routine or a prop dog ring revolution, whatever it is that you're going to do. You make the ring disappear at the, the beginning, you go into a whole bunch of stuff, and at the end, you bring the ring back in some magical way. It's about bringing it full circle. It's about, uh, you know, setting something up at the beginning and then bringing it at the end. It might be something simple. I'll tell you something that my friend Nemid does. My friend uh, Nemid Phoenix, I've talked about him on the channel before. One thing that he does, and I've seen him do this so many times, is he will give an invisible deck out at the beginning of the act. So at the beginning of his performance to a group of people, he'll give an invisible deck out. He'll then do the whole routine. He'll do the whole thing. He'll perform, perform, perform. And uh, at the end, he'll have someone name a card. Uh, he does it a lot more cleverly than this. There's a whole routine behind it. But the audience ends up with having a card named. And he calls back to the deck that was handed out at the beginning. Do you remember the deck I gave you at the beginning? Can I have that back? I said that there was something amazing that was going to happen with that deck of cards. And then he opens up and he shows that the card that they've named uh, is the only one facing in the other direction in the deck. Absolutely brilliant. So how can you take your act and bring everything back full circle? You start with something at the beginning and then you bring it full circle at the very end. That's a really nice way to close a show because it brings everything together and gives it a sense of finality, which we talked about in the opening point. Another thing that you can do with a closing routine uh, that I want to talk about in point number four, another thing that you can do is you can structure the closing routine so that it's obvious that that's the end of the act. So what I mean by this is, let's use an example of a close-up performance. Let's say that you're going to do a deck vanish at the end of the routine. And there's lots of different ways to vanish a deck, but let's just say that you're going to vanish the deck. I remember a really nice one that I used for years and years and years was an Ollie Mealing routine where he had two cards picked and one ended up under the shoe. Or was it? Yeah, it was Ollie Mealing, I'm sure it was. Um, it doesn't really matter. At some point, the deck's going to vanish, right? That makes a great closing routine. 
because you obviously can't carry on. If you're a card magician, for example, and you only do card magic and you make your deck of cards vanish, well, how can you carry on? You can't. The deck's vanished. The deck's gone. I do a routine which I performed on uh, Magic Live and I've talked about it on this channel before and I call it the Triple Rising Card and three people pick cards and eat, uh, with a regular deck and each one rises out the deck in a different way and the first one just rises normally, the second one a folded card rises out the deck and then the third one the deck vanishes. Uh, the card rises out the deck and the deck vanishes. That's a great closing routine for me. I actually do close with that quite a lot because at the end, the deck's vanished. I go, well, I can't do anything else. The deck's gone. Thank you very much. Uh, and it's a great moment when you open up your hands and you show that the deck has vanished. Killer moment right there. Um, but also, uh, you, you, it's obvious that that's the end because your props have disappeared, if that kind of makes sense. Um, so I'm going to... Um, show you the performance footage of that particular routine just so you can see what I mean. But the important thing to take into consideration is how are you going to structure your closing trick to, to give it, a, and again, it comes back to this whole concept of giving it a sense of finality. Making your props disappear at the end is giving everything a sense of finality. It can't continue. It might be that you're doing a trick with a coin and the coin vanishes and now you can't do any more coin magic. Um, whatever it may be, uh, how are you going to actually make, make it so that you're giving that routine a sense of finality at the very end? Right, point five, there's something else I want you to consider here, which is that your closing routine must fit the theme of the rest of the show. And I've seen so many people, especially on stage, they do this incorrectly. And I think one of the reasons they do this incorrectly is because they haven't thought about their character or they haven't thought about the structure of their act. And because they haven't thought about the structure of their act or their character, they're kind of all over the place. But I've seen so many acts and what they do is they have this very dark Max Maven, Darren Brown style persona where everything is very serious. Everything is very um, kind of to the point. There's no comedy in it. And then they finish off with really funny comedic routine um, that's just completely out of left field. And I've seen it done in reverse where, ev where um, somebody will perform a really funny comedy magic show and at the end they go really dark and they go, right, I'd like to take things seriously right now and do this final routine. I'd like to be serious. And, uh, and they do smash and stab or they do some sort of the pain game style routine or shattered or whatever it may be. And it's kind of like, well, hang on a minute, where the hell did that come from? You were doing this stuff and you weren't taking yourself all seriously. And it's not like they've tried to play it for comedy. I've seen Smash and Stab done in a very funny way before. They completely turn, turn the whole thing on its head and now they're all very serious. And it's kind of like an audience watching this goes, what? Where, where did this come from? Uh, I think you need to understand the theme of your show. You, you need to understand what your show is designed to put across. Are you a comedy magician? If you are a comedy magician, then you need to make sure that the, every single trick follows that theme. And if you're going to do something that takes a darker turn, make sure that it fits within that show and you do it in that particular way. It's like, you know, my, my illusion act, and again, we'll go back to my illusion act. My illusion act is comedy illusions. So I couldn't do something like Impaled at the end of my illusion show. As much as I love that illusion, it's a bit too dark for something I'm, I would do. It has to be, you know, very, very different. It has to be something that's very upbeat and very jovial and very jokey. So understand that your closing routine, just because you've seen a trick in the dealer hall at the magic convention you've been to and you absolutely love it, you need to ask yourself a question. Does that trick fit your act? Does it fit your character? Does it fit the style of the act? Because if it doesn't, even if it's the best closer in the world, you either have to adapt your show to fit that theme or you just have to forget it and look for something else. Okay, another thing to consider when you're putting together a closer in your act, something else that's worthwhile considering, is finishing off a theme that's run throughout your act. So if you've had a particular act and during the course of the act, various things have happened, it would be nice to close that act by having that theme continue in a bigger way. And I'll give you a couple of examples again. Mark Oberon's uh, award-winning act, if you haven't seen it, where everything turns gold. Throughout the routine, 
everything's turning gold. The deck of cards is turning gold. The flower's turning gold. This is turning gold. That's turning gold. And at the end, everything turns gold and he's made this amazing giant gold trophy appear, whatever it may be. That's the perfect example because you've got this wonderful moment, this big final production, but again, everything is gold. It's all following a theme. So you've set this theme up that starts at the beginning of the show and it continues through to the end. And the, the closing routine is tied into that into that theme, if that kind of makes sense. Now, I do that in a close-up set. In a particular close-up set that I do, I do everything. I, I have this whole set where everything becomes clear. So I start off by... Um, uh, having a deck of cards and, and, and I do a card routine and then they hold the cards in between their hands and then once they've held the cards in between their hands I say I'm going to come back to that and I make some coins appear and I start by making the coins turn clear one at a time and I'm using this pen to make the coins turn clear all the coins turn clear then the pen turns clear and then I go back to the deck of cards that they've been holding on to and they open up the box and they look at it and now the deck has turned completely clear as well and the whole routine has gone clear and and it brings everything together. Again, it brings it full circle because I started off by making things clear. I finish off by making things clear. Uh, it's it, Look at the theming throughout your show. You know, you look at Eric Chen's amazing performance on America's Got Talent and you can see that. You can see that the, the, the finale of his act everything has gone back to the way it was, but it follows that theme of having that tape down the middle of the table and and, and it, it, it all kind of themes together, if that makes sense. So is there a common theme that your routine is following? And if not, why not? You know, I see so many people and their act is just hob hodge. It's all over the place. I'm doing this, now I'm doing this, now I'm doing this, now I'm doing this, now I'm doing this. Try and theme your show wherever possible. Try and see if there's a, a theme that runs all the way through your show. And if there is a theme that runs all the way through your show, how can you make your closing routine fit within that theme? Because that will give it theatrically, that will make uh, a bigger impact on an audience, if that makes sense. I mentioned this before, but I've got it down as a note, so I'm going to mention it again. And it's really important that you understand that the last trick of your show should be the best trick of your show. The last, I'll say it again because it's so important, the final trick that you perform to the group of people, whether it be on stage or whether it be close up, it should be the best trick that you perform. Because that's going to be the one that gives the most impact. I remember when I saw David Penn, my friend David Penn, I remember when I saw Dave uh, perform in the Britain Does Variety finals and he finished on the water tank. And I was thinking all the way through, I wonder what he's going to finish on. I wonder what he's going to finish on because he has so many amazing illusions and he was doing clear soaring in half and he was doing this and he was doing this and he was doing this. And then he came out and... He did the, the water tank and it was absolutely the right decision because it was the best trick of his act. I mean, it was just absolutely incredible. And there's no way he could have followed that with anything else. And he'd obviously sat down and looked at all of his different illusions and his different props and went, well, that is the one that gives the most impact. Um, so that is going to be the best trick of my show. So honestly, have a look at your working repertoire. It doesn't matter if you're doing an illusion act or you're doing a close-up performance or you're doing a parlor show or a cabaret show. Have a look at the tricks that you've decided to put in that show. Have a look at the tricks and then try to decide which are the best tricks, which are the tricks that play the strongest. And, and there is how you're going to find out what your closer is, because you don't want to have the closing routine weaker than any other moment in the show. Um, so and, and it's only you that can do this because you know your act better than anyone else. You've performed your act better than everyone else. You know which tricks play the strongest. You will know which tricks play the weakest. So it's important to work out which are your strongest tricks and make sure that they are the ones that you put in that closing position. I talked about this a couple of weeks ago, but something else that's worthwhile considering and something else that you really should consider is a, is there a routine in your act that allows you to give a magical souvenir out to the audience? Because sometimes, especially when you're performing close up, having that moment where a magical souvenir is given out is a great ending to a show, as long as the souvenir is right. So for example, um, Anniversary Waltz or my own routine, Easy Waltzer. That is a perfect example because with Anniversary Waltz or with Easy Waltzer, um, you've got that routine at the end where the two cards are fused together into one. 
and on a married couple that's a brilliant way to end the routine because you've got these two you've got this card that's um you know you've got the two people have picked cards and they're fused together into one and you give it them as a souvenir and hey this is going to represent you guys you've come together in life today these two cards are a visual symbolization of that every time you look at these two cards fused into one you can remember why you guys are absolutely perfect for each other that sort of moment right there that's a great finale that's a great ending look at my routine chop uh where you know you're doing this chop cup routine then you make a lemon appear and then inside the lemon is the is the uh the bill giving that bill back it's not really a souvenir because it's their bill but it really is a magical moment i know spec to some some magicians go well you're giving them a soggy bill back and is that yeah but they will remember that moment trust me uh, for me the best finale to my close-up set, and I've talked about this on this channel openly over and over again, the best finale to my close-up set at the moment is the cube in bottle. I do a lot of cube magic, and this is, I cannot find a better closer. Now, I can't do it all the time because it costs me money every time I give away one of those cubes in the bottle, um, and I have other ways of closing my Rubik's Cube Act, including Clear Cube by uh, Prop Dog, including the Behind the Back Soul by Andrew Murray, but Clear cube, uh, not clear cube, sorry, cube in bottle is absolutely amazing. If I could make it financially viable to close every single cube act with cube in bottle, I would. Um, and, and for those people that have got cube in bottle and have decided not to give it away, you are completely missing the point of this routine. The beautiful thing about this moment is that you take two completely normal objects, fuse them together into one and then give them away as a souvenir. It's not to love. It's absolutely amazing. It really is. It's incredible. So have a look at your act and think about what routines you do that creates a magical souvenir, especially as a close-up magician. And can you engineer your act to make that the closer? So the last thing that you do is give that souvenir out to the audience. So the final thing that I want to talk about is something that a lot of people say when you're actually closing an act, especially on stage, which is you shouldn't have an audience member with you. A lot of people say, well, when you when you finish a, a, a stage show, you want to be the only person on stage. So all the adulation and attention is on you. I disagree with that. If you look at my video that I did on the best routines to close a stand up show, you'll see that pretty much every single one of them, I've got one or two members on stage with me, members of the audience on stage with me. And the reason is I want it to be about them. I don't want it to be about me. Yeah. I'm the magician, I'm the one doing the magic, and I'm the one that's hopefully entertaining people, but I want it to be about them. I love it when I empower the spectators, and I do routines where they are actually uh, the spectator in the show, where they're actually playing the role of the magician in whatever routine it is that I'm trying to do that in, whether it be Cue the Magic by Angelo Carbone or whatever it may be, uh, Pop Hayden's Linking Ring routine. I love it when I empower that audience member and they become the star of the show. So... I wanted to bring this up because I know a lot of people say you should be on stage on your own at the end of a, an act. I completely disagree with that and I have no problem finishing my show and having people on stage with me. I, I, a lot of the time when I do a cabaret show, I do this routine where I have four people up on stage with me and it's kind of like a tossed out deck with the four people on stage but done in a very comedic way. It's one of my... Um, uh, kind of my signature routines that people book me for when I perform on stage. And the finale of the show is me on stage with four other people. Um, and they all play an important part in, in the show. And at the end, you know, I raise their hands and they're, they're the ones that are the star of the show. So I don't think it's important, but it's worth it's worth pointing out. A lot of people do say that. I disagree, but really it's up to you to make your own decisions. So that's it. These, that's the biggest pieces of advice I can give you when it comes to creating a closer for your show. Ultimately, guys, what you need to do is go back and watch the set list video that I put together. You want to write out all of the tricks that you do. Don't just try and buy an opener uh, or a closer, sorry. Don't just try and buy a closer that you've never done before. Look at your repertoire. Look at all the tricks you do and go through and try to figure out which ones get the best reactions, which ones are the most magical, which ones deliver the most impact, uh, which ones play the biggest. 
which ones feel like a natural closer. And then what you want to do is you want to work out a way of actually structuring your act so that everything builds towards that finale. And that's the important thing. Make sure that everything flows logically and you transition from one routine to another to another. Don't be that person that does this whole act and then everything changes in the finale, like I said earlier. You want to make sure that everything kind of flows together and it all transitions and it all makes sense and it fits within you as a character and within your show as a whole, if that kind of makes sense. Um, that's what you need to do. So that's the best piece of advice I can give you. Now it's over to you. Let's get a dialogue going in the comments down below. What do you think? Do you have routines that you use as a closer in your closer pack or your stage show? And if you have, let us know in the comments down below. I'd love to know what your closing routine is. What is the routine that you feel most comfortable closing your act with? And would you like to see a follow-up video of this? I'd love to do a follow-up video. I really would. If you want to see more videos like this, that would be absolutely fine. Just let me know in the comments down below. And please don't forget subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment down below and I'm going to be back again tomorrow on Friday with a rant at nine o'clock, a shorts at two o'clock and at six o'clock a magic live. Thanks very much for checking out the channel. I really appreciate every single one of you. I'll see you again. My name's Craig from Magic TV.